Welcome to the WBSC's Coach Commission Grassroots Webinar, the entry level of the WBSC Coach Commission's licensing program. This module will give an overview of the entire WBSC Grassroots Webinar, the goals of the WBSC Coach Licensing Levels, what the role of the coach is at the grassroots level, and an introduction of the game field and the equipment used in baseball and softball. Let's start with the presentation. The content of the grassroots webinars are split within six modules, as you can see to the right of your screen. As previously discussed, during this module, we will give a presentation of the other five webinars, an overview of the Coach Commission project, the role of a coach, and introduce the game field and equipment that is necessary to play baseball and softball. The second module will go through the proper way to warm up for a baseball or softball session, and how to learn and improve upon a player's catching and throwing abilities. During the third module, the topics will be the defensive fundamentals of fielding a ground ball and catching fly balls, while in the fourth module, we will focus on the offensive part of the game, hitting and running the bases. During the fifth module, we will introduce the game of mini baseball with the application of the fundamentals into real games, and the sixth and final module, we will present the game of baseball five a new WBSC discipline, which is a perfect developmental tool for the grassroots level. Before going into specific details about the project of the Coach Commission, the Chair, Marco Mazzieri, on behalf of the entire WBSC Coach Commission, has an important message for all of you. Hello everyone, my name is Marco Mazzieri and on behalf of the WBSC Coach Commission, I welcome all of you to this webinar. There is a global interest in the games of baseball and softball and the WBSC continues working tirelessly to encourage and support the development of our sports. One main goal of the WBSC is to emphasize ethics, fair play, sportsmanship and character building throughout the development of baseball softball players. To fulfill its mission, the WBSC is providing a series of webinars for anyone around the world who is interested in learning about the games of baseball and softball with the goal of becoming an effective and knowledgeable coach. Whenever we work with kids or young athletes, it is important to introduce them to the fundamental movement and skills of baseball and softball in a fun way in order to improve their abilities and grow a love for the game. Skill acquisition, as a matter of fact, occurs subconsciously when someone is having fun. The fundamentals of baseball and softball include basic overall abilities such as coordination, agility, jumping, balance, speed. These basic skills are essential for a qualitative approach to perform in any sport. The WBSC Coach Commission put in place an international standard for coaching licensing composed of a total of five levels, grassroots and level one to four for baseball and softball. Each level a coach advances builds upon the previous level. The grassroots level is the introductory course and is combined for baseball and softball, while the following four levels will be dedicated to either baseball or softball. The grassroots level is the only one that does not foresee a final exam, while from level one and on, passing the exam is mandatory for any coach that wants to move from one level to the next one. Remember, Coaching is performing, and we as coaches should always strive to get better, just like what we ask our athletes to do. Today's webinar on the grassroots level is geared towards anyone interested in starting a complete training program to become an expert baseball coach or softball coach, or simply dedicated to school teachers and parents interested in gaining the basic information to jump spot, to jump start a sports program within their school or their community. Our goal is to share the passion that we have with anyone interested 
and teach the basics of the game. I remind you that it's combined for baseball and softball and that there will not be an exit testing. Therefore, the participants will not receive a certification, but simply a certificate of participation. I hope you will enjoy the webinar. Thank you. On this slide, you can see the structure and diversity of the WBSC Coach Commission. The chair of the commission, Marco Mazzieri, is from Italy. The baseball members include DJ Wabic, John McLaren, and Raphael Colon, all of whom are from the United States. Andrea Dauria from Italy represents the sole Baseball Five member, while softball members include Craig Montevides and Kyla Haulis from the United States and David Santos from Puerto Rico. The Coach Commission liaison is Giovanni Pantaleone from Italy. As mentioned by the chair in the introductory video, the Coach Commission licensing program consists of five levels. Grassroots, that is an orientation for beginners, is combined for baseball and softball. After following the six modules, the participants will be awarded a certification of participation without the need of a final exam. Level one is divided for baseball and softball. It is a basic level with an entry test and a final exam. The coaches that pass the final exam will become a WBSC level one certified coach. This level is geared towards under 12 baseball coaches and under 15 softball coaches. Level two or intermediate will have the same procedures as level one with an entry test and a final exam that will guarantee, if passed, the title of WBSC level two certified coach. This level is geared towards under 15 baseball coaches and under 18 softball coaches. Level three or advanced is designed for over 15 baseball coaches and over 18 softball coaches. Same as the previous levels, there will be an entry test and a final exam. Level four or high performance will contain content centered around nutrition, psychology, strength and conditioning, scouting, and more. As mentioned, passing a certification level allows access to the next course. Now we'll discuss the most fundamentally important topic within the WBSC coach licensing program, the role of a coach. Please pay attention to the next video where mental coach and WBSC coach commission member, Rafael Colon explains the role of the coach at the grassroots level from a WBSC standpoint. Hello, Rafi Colon with the World Baseball Softball Confederation Coach Commission. Welcome to the grassroots introductory level. In this introductory level, you will learn the core themes, the philosophy, and the principles that serve as the foundation pillars for the coach certification program. Learning, understanding, and applying these pillars will provide a sound and defined process with a consistent message from the WBSC Coach Commission to anyone interested in starting a complete training program or jumpstarting a program within their school or community. Countless interviews and stories tell us that the journey of an athlete's love, enjoyment, and development of his or her baseball and or softball skills is attributable to the effectiveness of his or her coaches. The most knowledgeable coaches often work at the elite levels while volunteer coaches, who are critical at the early developmental levels, have insufficient training and knowledge. The WBSC recognizes that well-trained coaches are absolutely essential at all levels of an athlete's training progression, but most importantly, in his or her early training. The core themes of the coach certification program include vetted professionals who have sound baseball, softball expertise, have a servant-oriented leadership focus, have a passion for lifelong learning, sharing, and coaching, and who value worldwide human and cultural differences. If you're watching this webinar, it is because you're invested. And let this be the tipping point 
for being an integral part of this global movement for the love of baseball and softball. The philosophy is focused on interpersonal relations of human development. From the classroom to the field, we will use positive psychology to gain an interest in baseball and softball globally using key developmental words such as getting better. The words used and when they are used to give athletes feedback is very important. It is an expectation to continuously use positive reinforcement language in the communication processes with all players to make lasting and memorable impressions in the life of the interested athlete, much like great teachers serve as positive role models with their students. We will practice encouragement and enjoyment, fun for improvement. And the principles. The principles focus on important qualities to teach the games of baseball and softball. Connect with all the participants, inspire learning and development, improve performance for results, and again promote enjoyment and fun. We will use the TARS method, T-A-R-S, method of communication for instruction, skill development, and fun. You will learn more about TARS in Level 1, The Role of the Coach. It is an expectation that you embrace and understand the themes, philosophy, and principles and apply them in your journey to becoming a WBSC certified coach or assisting in jumpstarting a program within your school or community. To summarize the concepts expressed, the role of the coach is rooted in three pillars. Number one, the core themes, which include vetted professionals who have sound baseball, softball expertise, servant oriented leaders, passion for lifelong learning, sharing and coaching, and value human and cultural differences worldwide. Number two, the philosophy. The WBSC certified coach philosophy is focused on interpersonal relations of human development with positive psychology and the key to development words of getting better. Continuously using positive reinforcement language in their communication processes with all players to make lasting and memorable impressions in the life of the interested athlete and much like great teachers with students serve as positive role models. Number three, the principles. The WBSC Certified Coach Corps principles focus on important qualities to teach the game of baseball and softball, connect with all who are participating, inspire learning, develop, improve performance for results, and enjoyment and fun. Children learn best by doing rather than listening to someone telling them how to do things. In the last topic of the first module of the grassroots webinar, we will give an overview of the layout of a baseball and softball field as well as the equipment used in the game. First, we will start with the field. On the left side of the screen, you can see the layout of a baseball field, while on the right side of the screen, you can see a softball field. Without going into too many details that we will see on the following slide, the starting point for much of the action on the field is home plate, or officially home base which is a five-sided slab of whitened rubber. The point of home plate where two sides meet at right angles is at one corner of a 90 foot, 27.43 meters square. The other three corners of the square in counterclockwise order from home plate are called first, second, and third base, which are three canvas or rubber bases. Near the center of the square is an artificial hill known as the pitcher's mound with a white rubber slab known as the pitcher's plate, or also known as the rubber on top of the mound. All the bases, including home plate, lie entirely within fair territory. The lines from home plate to first and third bases extend to the nearest fence, stand, or other obstructions and are called foul lines. The portion of the playing field between and including the foul lines is fair territory. The rest is considered foul territory. The area within the square formed by the bases is officially called the infield, while the open area following the infield is known as the outfield. Most baseball fields are enclosed with a fence that marks the outer edge of the outfield. 
The fence is usually set at a distance range from 300 to 420 feet, 90 to 130 meters, from home plate. Baseball fields have a right and left foul pole. These poles are at an intersection of the foul lines and the respective ends of the outfield fence. A softball field is similar to a baseball field. The distance in between bases is reduced to 60 feet, or 18.29 meters. A pitcher's mound, in softball it's flat, most of the time called a pitcher's circle instead of a mound, that ranges from 43 to 46 feet, or 13.11 to 14.02 meters for female and males respectively away from home plate and an outfield fence that is 220 to 300 feet or 67.06 to 91.44 meters away from home plate depending on the type of softball being played let's now look at the specific components of both fields as we already mentioned home plate is a five-sided slab of whitened rubber 17 inches square, the two of the corners removed so that one end is 17 inches long, two adjacent sides are 8.5 inches, and the remaining two sides are 12 inches, and set in an angle to make a point. The plate is set into the ground such that its surface is level with the surrounding ground. Adjacent to each of the two parallel 8.5 inch sides is a batter's box. The other three bases are canvas or rubber bases which are 15 inches square and three to five inches in thickness made of soft material. In softball, first base has an additional base called a safety base, built as two standard bases in one, and it measures 15 inches by 30 inches. It is two and a half inches high. Half the base is the standard white color, and the other half is fluorescent orange. It's placed directly on the first base line. The white portion of the safety base is placed inside of the line, also known as fair territory while the orange half is placed in foul territory. The safety base is designed to prevent collisions and other contact incidents at first base. The first baseman and other defensive players are allowed only to touch the white portion of the safety base during the play. On offense, the runner may touch only the orange portion of the base during close plays. In a baseball field, in roughly the middle of the square is a low artificial hill called the pitcher's mound. This is where the pitcher stands when delivering a pitch towards home. Atop the mound is a white rubber slab called the pitcher's plate or pitcher's rubber. In softball, we have the pitcher circle, a circular area with an eight foot radius measured from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's plate. In both baseball and softball, the dugout is a team's bench and is located in foul territory between home plate and either first or third base. There are two dugouts one for the home team and one for the visiting team. In general, the dugout is occupied by all players that are not on the field at that particular time, as well as coaches and other authorized personnel. The player's equipment is also kept in the dugout during games. Considered part of a baseball and softball field is the foul pole, which is a tall, narrow, usually yellow pole that stands as a vertical extension of the foul lines at the edge of the field of play. Foul poles are typically much higher than the top of the outfield fence or wall. The purpose is to define the fair foul boundary when the ball is in the air. If the ball were to hit the foul pole, it would be fair because the poles themselves are considered fair territory. Now let's look at the equipment required to play baseball or softball. In the picture, you see the equipment that is used when playing a baseball or softball game. Catching gear, helmet, glove, bat, and the ball. In the following slide, we will see these items one by one. The single most important item that is needed in order to play baseball and softball is the ball. Baseball and softball have two different balls and the main differences are the size, the weight, and the material that the ball is made out of. You will also notice that the colors of the baseball and softball on the slide are different. The ball used in baseball is comprised of a rubber or cork center wrapped in yarn and covered with white horse hide or cow hide. A regulation baseball is nine to nine and a quarter inches in circumference with a mass of five to five and a quarter ounces. 
A baseball is bound together by 108 hand woven stitches through the cowhide leather. In the picture, you see the different layers from the two external pieces of leather and the red seams, then a layer of polyester thread, cotton thread, two different layers of thick wool yarn, and the rubber core, which is placed inside a cork core. The ball in softball, despite the sport's name, is not soft at all. The size of the ball varies according to the classification of play. The permitted circumferences in international play are 12 inches and between six and a quarter and seven ounces. These measures change in youth softball. The ball is most often covered in yellow leather in two pieces, roughly the shape of a figure eight and sewn together with red thread. The core of the ball may be made of a mixture of cork and rubber or polyurethane mixture. Another very important tool is the glove. All defensive players wear fielding gloves. A baseball or softball glove is a leather glove that players use to catch a ball hit by a batter or thrown by a fielder. Gloves have webbing between the thumb and the forefinger, known as the pocket. There are different sized gloves for different positions on the field. Catchers and first basemen have one whose pockets are larger than the other gloves. These have additional padding. Catchers in baseball and softball, besides the glove that we have already described, use the following equipment to help prevent injury while behind the plate. A catcher's mask to protect the face, much of the side of the head, and often part of the throat. In recent years, catchers have begun wearing masks similar to those worn by ice hockey goaltenders. The hockey style mask typically includes a section which protects the top of the head. Older style masks are usually worn over a flapless helmet, worn backwards and often with a trimmed bill, to provide similar protection to the skull. The chest protector, a piece of equipment padded with rubber, plastic foam or gel that protects the catcher's body while blocking as well as from the impact of a pitch if he fails to catch it. Many modern chest protectors also have an extension to cover the shoulder of the non-throwing or glove hand. Leg guards to protect the knees and legs from the impact of a ball that the catcher is unable to play cleanly. A batting helmet is worn by batters in the game of baseball and softball. It is meant to protect the batter's head from errant pitches thrown by the pitcher. A helmet must have two ear flaps, one on each side, and must be worn by batters and runners. A baseball bat is a smooth wooden or metal club used to hit the ball after it is thrown by the pitcher. In softball, the bat used by the batter can be made of wood, aluminum, or composite materials such as carbon fiber. This is the end of the first module of the Grassroots Webinar. Thank you for watching, and with the WBSC, it's game time.